This morning, our scripture reading we find in Luke chapter 2, and we read beginning in verse 8. But before we read, let us pray. Almighty God, be with us this morning. In these days that you have given to us, Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds so that we might see Jesus coming into the world and in him find our joy. We pray that you would place us in the fields with shepherds, that you would place us in the cave with Joseph and Mary. And as we are there, may we find the Christ who came to remind us that you, O God, are with us. We ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to be with us as we seek to know your word. We pray these things, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, the very first Christmas is a terribly lonely story. In any other year, we might miss that loneliness because we are often surrounded by family and loved ones. We, we celebrate with special ceremonies. We have family reunions. We have extra church services and gatherings around tables and trees. Now in these times, a pastor like me might talk about the loneliness that people experience. And we might pray for those who are experiencing it among us. We think about those who have lost who each year experience empty chairs and empty celebrations. We may think about those who are excluded because of various circumstances in life. We think of those who may have nobody to revel with in the joy of the season. And most years, when they are normal, we see and hear these things, and we pray for them, and, and, and we know them, but it's hard for us to understand the terrible, not goodness of being alone in any other year. But this year, we know, and it's important for us to name that in times like these. In Christian love, we are refraining from our normal celebrations. We're not traveling, we're not having large family gatherings. Grandparents are not spoiling their wonderful grandchildren with hugs and affection. The annual Christmas party isn't happening at work. Concerts and pageants and parades and songs are, are all canceled and postponed till next year. We've set them aside. We have sacrificed for our neighbor's good. And we've done so even though it's not easy. None of this is easy and nobody wants this. And I give all of you thanks for your Christian witness the true strength and character that you are showing in this long era of restraint. 
And it's in times like these that the world sees us and they see us laying down these important things. And when they see us in this moment of sacrifice and restraint and our Christian love, they see within us the grace of Jesus. But that comes at a cost. And the cost of following Jesus in times like this is the feeling of loneliness. And I know that we're all feeling it. It's normal. And what we're going to do this morning is we're going to tap into that feeling. And we're going to turn that feeling of loneliness from something that is terrible to something that is good because it's going to allow us to connect with the Word of God, with the Scriptures, with the Christmas story in a new way so that we can see this terribly lonely Christmas story in, in a fresh way. And we see this story, and it's a story that we enter into, and it takes place in a setting that doesn't make sense. It is a tremendously lonely place. We have Mary and Joseph as we come into the story of shepherds, and they are in a shepherd's cave on the outskirts of Bethlehem. The earliest tradition and the fact that the shepherds knew the location and the fact that they could go there freely without worry gives us evidence of this. And verse 7 tells us why it is that Mary and Joseph were there, that there was no guest room available for them. And we might read that and just accept it as an expl explanation, but if we pause for a moment just before verse 8 and we read in verse 7, and we think about it, we, we understand just how absurd an explanation this is. Joseph and Mary have traveled a long way for this census that is taking place. They've arrived at Bethlehem, and Bethlehem is a place where we're told that Joseph has family. Now, they might be distant family, they might not be closely connected at all, but it's still family that Joseph is traveling to. And on top of that, with Joseph, we have Mary, who is significantly pregnant. She is ready to give birth. It is the last days, in the last term, in the last trimester. So you need to imagine the scene uh, as Joseph and Mary arrive. And here you are. Put yourself in the place of the one who is opening the door. And here is a family member, even if it's a distant one who is there, and with him is a young woman who is obviously in need. She needs a safe and clean environment for this baby to come. Now let's grant that the rest of the house is full. It's sensitive time and the place is jam-packed. Still, you're living in a world of hospitality, a culture that takes seriously its deep family connections and obligations. You are a person who knows that childbirth is dangerous, even in the most clean and pristine of environments possible in that time. With them standing at the door, looking for shelter, are you going to send them to the manure-laced cave? I know I'm not. If they show up at my door, I'm giving them my room, or I'm jamming a couple of cousins into a room together for a few days. Or I'm going to go to the neighbors and find extra space there. Or I'm going to grab a tent and camp in the yard. Or maybe it's me and I'm going to go out to the cave with the manure smell and, and the sheep bits. There is no way that any of us opening our doors looking to Mary and Joseph are going to send them to a cave. And yet there they are. And it only makes sense if we know if we know about Mary and Joseph in the first place. And their family, they might be distant, but they're going to know. They're going to know that Joseph isn't the father. Perhaps they were invited to a wedding celebration that didn't really happen. Because this is a scandal in the family. This is a breaking of the law. This is uncleanliness at their door that can't be condoned. Here is an obvious sinner that must be shunned. And this explanation in verse 7 that tells us there was no room simply meant nobody was willing to make it because Mary and Joseph were unwelcome. They were outcasts, alone in a shepherd's cave. The shepherds 
weren't there in that cave that night. In this part of the season, they would have been out in the fields, guarding their flocks. And they would have had to take them from field to field and water source to water source, so they were at a bit of a distance from the place. But these shepherds knew what it was like to be alone as well. The rabbis of the Talmud tell us that the shepherds were an unclean class. They were considered to be sinners and thieves, worse than shopkeepers. They were not to be trusted, they were to be kept at a distance as much as possible. And they were only allowed in town when they'd bring sheep for trade or to purchase supplies. Otherwise, they were kept beyond arm's length. Stay in the fields, stay in the caves. And their experience of religion was only the experience of judgment. The rabbis would chase them away, they wouldn't welcome them into the religious gatherings. The people would remind them always of how, how bad and unclean they were. They wouldn't have been welcomed, they wouldn't have been accepted, their songs wouldn't have been important, their testimony was never considered. If they heard the stories of angels, they would have been told that the angels were going to come for them. The angels would come one day to cleanse the world of people who were like them. The shepherds, were outcasts. The shepherds were alone. And then in this moment, one of those angels appeared to them. The angel isn't named, and we make an assumption that it's Gabriel. It certainly makes casting the nativity play a little simpler if we just have one person doing it. But it doesn't really matter which angel it was. It was an angel, and what matters is that when the shepherds see an angel and they think back to all the stories and their place in the world, and, and this is all happening, they are terrified. They're petrified, they're mortified. They've been told their whole lives that God doesn't want them, God doesn't accept them, God doesn't love them. That they are the worst of sinners, the worst of people, that they're unclean and unworthy. Their families cast them out and want nothing to do with them. And if an angel shows up, it means they must have really messed up. And this is it. That this is the story of their end. The shepherds, the outcasts, are terrified. So imagine their surprise when the angel said this, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then the skies open up, and an army of angels are there, with the glory of God shining all around them. This army that isn't there to kill them, or to punish them, or to judge them, or to harm them, but to welcome them into this beautiful celebration of praise. Perhaps one of the first and only times these shepherds, these outcasts, had ever been welcomed into a religious space and welcomed into the songs, into the praise of God for the Messiah who is given for all people. We'll come back to that in a moment. Mary, as the angel has told, has given birth. She and Joseph together, they wrapped the child in cloths because that's what they had. They set him down on the cleanest surface available to them in that cave, which is probably a stone with an indent in it. That's the manger where they keep food for the sheep. And nobody else is there. Not family from Bethlehem, not friends, not even a doctor or a midwife. Nobody's there, just them and Jesus, alone in the world, not welcomed by anyone. And then the shepherds come. And I wonder if Mary and Joseph could have heard the shepherds coming from a distance, if they could have heard the braying of sheep and the bleeding of lambs as these shepherds returned to their cave. It would have been their cave, a place for them to sleep safely and to house their sheep when they were in the area near the town for trade 
and for economy. Now, they probably weren't expected back during this part of the season. And so Mary and Joseph would have heard them coming, and perhaps they would have been afraid at this as these outcasts poked their their dirty heads into into the opening. I wonder if Mary and Joseph were wondering to themselves where they would go next, since they'd probably get kicked out of this place too. Now imagine their surprise when the shepherds came to see the baby, the baby that nobody else wanted to see, to welcome the good shepherd the true descendant of David, and not to throw them out of their cave, but to welcome them there when no one else would welcome them. That's the good news that is there for all people. It's the heart of the Christmas story that is shared with the world for those who are feeling alone for those who feel like they're outcasts, for those who feel like there is is nobody there for them. It's the fact that we are not. And around this child Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, is the story of God coming to be with the outcast, with the sinner, with those who are alone. And not just some of us, not just a select few, not just a religious class or the best of the best of the best, but the outcast, the sinner. God welcomes all no matter what, and all we need to do is simply receive that gift of grace, the gift that is freely given, knowing that no one is truly alone. God is with you. And we are called to share that good news for all people. And we share it with words of praise, with song, telling the world how it is that Jesus comes into our lives, letting people know wherever they are that God is there for them. And we share it, that good news, with all people when we welcome all people into our lives too. That's what the church is. It's not a place where we sing. It's not a building or an institution. The church is a place of outcasts welcoming outcasts, of people making sure that they know that they are not alone, that God is with them, and we are family together. This is the Christmas story of shepherds opening their cave and letting Mary and Joseph know that they are welcome there. And this is the Christmas story for us, of us welcoming others into our homes and into our caves and into our lives and into our hearts. This is the story in this unlikely setting of Mary and Joseph as shepherds in a lonely cave that is no longer lonely. Now the question for us is this, how can we like Mary, treasure these things in our hearts. And the first way we can do this is to tap into the loneliness of this season that we are feeling. It's good for us to be able to name our frustrations and our pains, to know that it's not good to be alone. And in these times when we are missing our grandchildren and our children and our brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and everyone in between, in this time when we are feeling the frustration of having to to be socially and lovingly distant, we can feel that burden. We can feel that place. And when we tap into the loneliness of our story, we can understand the loneliness of Mary and Joseph's story. We understand that the Christmas story is our story. And when we hear it and we feel it, it is in those moments where we can see the richness and the heights and the beauty of God's grace, of Jesus who comes into our story, of Jesus who comes into the world to die and to rise for us, of Jesus who comes into our lives to tell us that he is Emmanuel, God is with us and never lets us go. And all we need to do is just receive that gift, to welcome Jesus into our lives, to know the joy and the song of angels is there for us in our Messiah, in the Christ. 
And when we have tapped into that loneliness and we have then experienced the grace of Jesus and the joy that comes from that, that takes care of us in times like this, that lets us know in our frustrations and in our loneliness that God is here and that we're never alone, we then remember our call to be outcasts welcoming outcasts, sinners inviting sinners, opening our hearts and our lives and our homes to all without judgment or prejudice, sharing the good news. Now we do that in a loving way in days like this, where we make sure that we keep people safe, but we also remind them that they are loved. And there are ways that we can do that during this season where we can, we can pick up our phone and give others a call and let them know that we are with them and that Christ is with them. We can send cards and we can send letters and notes We can hop on FaceTime and on Zoom. We can open our lives with with simple expressions of joy. We can open our gifts to those who are in need and to share with those who are in trouble. Our call is to be outcasts welcoming outcasts, shepherds welcoming Jesus into our home, into our cave, and with them welcoming others, the family to whom God has called us. This is the Christmas story, the reminder that we are not alone and that the good news is for all people, including us. Welcome the gift. Know that Jesus is with you. Share the good news. Shall we pray? Almighty God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that Jesus has come into the world. We give you thanks that he came out of your great love for us. We give you thanks that he came to Mary and Joseph and to shepherds in this unlikely place that is so important, a place of hospitality, a place of love, a place where outcast meets outcast, where sinner meets sinner, and we find that we are loved and that we are never alone. We pray in these seasons and in these times as we feel some of the loneliness, that it would allow us to see the sin and brokenness of the world. But more than that, it would allow us to see the heights of your love, your glory that shines around, light in the darkness. And when we see that light, may we experience your presence and your joy. May we know the gift of life that is full and free and forever. And may we share it with one another. We pray that you would allow us to open our hearts and our lives, our homes and our generosity to those whom are around us, to those whom you call us to. May we welcome the outcast and the stranger. May we bless the sinner and the friend. May we show hospitality as you have called us to do it, knowing that you have given love and grace to this fallen world. We pray as a church that you would help us also to love one another in these times of loneliness, that you would give us moments where we can call and where we can write and where we can send notes and emails and and everything else. Let us remind one another that we're not alone. Let us bless one another with the gift of grace and hospitality. Let us celebrate the Christmas season, a terribly lonely story that we find is lonely no more. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.